Are you tired of paying for mealworms? Let's breed them instead. This easy four-step process will turn your mealworms into beetles and then you can start your farm. Welcome to Serenity Bell Outdoors. Today we will review the steps to set up a mealworm farm and see the results after a few months. Let's quickly look at the phases of the mealworms. Phase one, after they hatch, you have your young mealworm that starts off very translucent. And then phase two, you have your full size mealworm, which is an excellent feeder size for reptiles and amphibians, also chickens. For phase three, we have the pupa stage, and this is when it starts getting close to them turning into a darkling beetle. And for these, they have a really alien look about them. So let's take a look at all three of these phases so far together, just so you can see the difference in size. And then lastly, we completed with phase four when they turn into the darkling beetles. Once this happens, the cycle can begin again. Now for our easy mealworm farm setup. You take your container, step one. Step two, you go ahead and add oatmeal or whatever type of substance you like to use. You can use a type of grain. Step three, I start with a 50 pack of mealworms that you can get from your local pet store. And you just mix them around a bit. You can use a larger container and start with a pack of 100 or 500, depending on how many mealworms you think you will need. Now, for step three, we will go ahead and add some food. I like to use carrots the best because they last longest and they give the moisture and water that the mealworms will need. Step four, we'll go ahead and add on a cover container. I like to use egg cartons, but you can also use a piece of cardboard or wood so that they have something to hide under. And as you can see, the mealworm started exploring right away. Now let's fast forward six months and see where we stand. We have lots of mealworms and we have lots of beetles. It took a couple of months for the first full cycle of the mealworms to go from the mealworm to the pupa to the darkling beetle laying eggs. But then after that, it was a go. We're probably about our third cycle. And as you can look when I mix it around, you see a lot of different sizes of the mealworms. And that is because we are going through multiple phases at the same time because the beetles left eggs at different times. So we have a lot of ranges of growth, which will keep this container cycling for a long time. They have been doing great with me using carrots as their staple diet, but occasionally I will throw in other pieces of fruit or vegetables. I also prefer to keep the mealworms, beetles, pupa, and the eggs just all in one container and I just let it cycle. Some people divide them up into different containers once they start hatching. That will work for a more complex setup if you need it, if you have to have lots and lots of feeders. But for the normal household, this will work just fine. There is one thing that I do occasionally when I go in to put in the carrots. I sort out the different pupa that I can see just to try to keep count and make sure the cycle is still phasing through, which you see I have a good number of pupa here that will develop into the darkling beetle, which will then keep our cycle going because the beetle will lay the eggs that will hatch our larva, which will be the mealworms. Well, this was a short, quick video to give the four easy steps of mealworm breeding. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. You have a wonderful day. Thank you.